In 1996, the government in Washington, D.C. passed a law known as HIPAA. This stands for the Health, Insurance, Portability, and Accountability Act. It was a law to help people keep their health insurance when they change jobs. Portability is a term that means being able to carry something with you. In this case, to carry your current employer-provided health insurance to your new company when you change jobs. HIPAA regulations affect everyone who works in healthcare. To understand HIPAA and how it affects you, you must first understand what brought these changes about. Before the Second World War, most people worked in one place all their lives. Also, businesses were usually smaller than today and fairly local. During the 20th century, businesses began to get bigger and to have divisions in other areas of the country, but people still tended to go to work for one company and stay there until they retired. Bigger companies were able to offer benefits to their employees like health insurance, and soon having health insurance became one of the reasons people wanted to work for certain companies. After the war, it became more and more common for people to change jobs looking for higher pay or better benefits. As people moved to a new job, they often found they had to change to a new health insurance plan. Sometimes it meant getting a different doctor or going to a different clinic. It also meant that their health records had to be transferred. Congress wanted to let people who changed jobs take their existing insurance plans with them to their new jobs. They didn't want families to be without insurance because of a job. Title I of HIPAA covers health care access, portability, and renewability. Title I lists and explains the federal laws and protections that were already in place to protect health care coverage and keep personal information confidential. It did not change anything. It simply brought all the rules that were already in force into one document so they could be more easily understood. There are some very important things made clear by Title I. First, an employee health plan cannot deny a new employee health coverage because of a person's current health problems, medical history, genetic information, or disability. However, Title I does allow an insurance company to refuse to pay for care related to a pre-existing condition for up to the first 18 months the person has the insurance. After that time, the employee's insurance must cover the pre-existing condition as well as any new conditions. Title I also says that anyone who has had health coverage with an employer for at least 18 months must be offered. Title II of HIPAA covers two main areas, preventing health care fraud and abuse and providing rules to make health care plan administration simpler. There are many ways fraud and abuse can happen in medical insurance programs. Title II defines what is fraud or abuse and sets penalties for the offenses. Most of the fraud and abuse defined in HIPAA happens as part of insurance billing. For example, it is fraud when someone deliberately bills for something that never happened or changes the information to make a low-cost procedure or treatment into a more expensive one. It's important for all healthcare workers to understand that the information in a health claim must be accurate. There are five rules in Title II that have had a big impact on everyone who works in health care in the United States. We will now take a look at them. First is the privacy rule. All protected health information is covered under this rule. Protected health information is any information that shows the patient's name, birth date, social security, or medical record number, or any other information that would make it possible to identify. The codes for physician services are based on an existing code called the Current Procedural Terminology, which is updated each year by the American Medical Association. Codes for medical equipment and supplies, prosthetics, orthotics, injectable drugs, transportation services, and other services not found in the current procedural terminology come from another long-used set of codes. 
There are code sets for use in all aspects of healthcare information transfer. If you are involved in preparing patient bills or insurance claims, you will be required to use the proper codes. Using standardized codes helps make the electronic transfer of healthcare data smoother and more accurate. Now we will look at the third important rule called the security rule. Patient information is stored in many digital formats. It is also sent from one place to another in a variety of forms. This means that the information can be accessed in a number of ways. The security rule is aimed at keeping this information confidential and safe when it is sent. All healthcare providers such as hospitals, physicians, medical transcribing and billing services, and large health plans are now using a unique identifier when they send digital information. The National Provider Identifier, or NPI, is a 10-digit numeric code. Each provider is issued their own unique NPI. While provider names can be similar, the provider codes are all different. This reduces the chance for error. When making claims for healthcare services that have been furnished or sending healthcare information for any reason, the provider always uses their national provider identifier. The fifth rule covers enforcement of the HIPAA Act and sets penalties for violating HIPAA rules. People found guilty of these violations can be fined and even sent to prison. At the extreme, anyone caught selling private health care information can be fined up to $250,000 and sentenced up to 10 years. By being aware of what HIPAA requires, you help guard the privacy of your patients and the security of their protected health information. This is an important part of preserving a positive relationship between the patient and the health care provider.